packing oil, waiting on the semi to get here. Perfect. Not too bad. Never fail. Well, there he made it. There's Vern with Kelly Strucken. know the totals. Okay, we're not hearing them. Looks like it came out about 155. We'll guess them. That's pretty close. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm trying to show you this last couple loads here this morning. We're going to take things back and get switched over to running my organic beans again. It's raining so we're not gonna get to run beans this afternoon but what are you complaining about look at this guy it's not raining that bad oh he's a comedian yeah it's not raining that bad no it's just gonna make the bean go clear up to 18 percent and slug the combine every half a second anyway we got the two grain carts moving back we're gonna leave the combine down there just because I don't want to get a bunch of road slime stuck all over it again. So we'll go back down and get the pickup. And then I don't know, we'll just see what the day does. We'll come back and work on the old Ford for a minute. Need to get it in the shop and check it out. Check the brakes out on it. We just got it back from the shop here a couple weeks ago. 
been so busy with harvest, we haven't gotten the tires replaced on it or brakes checked out. So touch the brake and the steering wheel goes blah, 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 all over the place. So brakes are obviously screwed up. But anyway, we'll check into it. Not like we're hurting for pickups. No, we'll go get the other pickup and come back and see what else we're gonna do. Doing a little cleaning out on the combine. Getting all the old stuff blowed out of there. Another reminder, when you're driving through the countryside and you see a charred, black, burnt, used to be John Deere combine, and a brand new one. Saw it just yesterday. No, I don't want that one catching on fire. So we'll just take a little bit, do a little cleaning, and blow all the chaff and dust out of it. Blow all that corn out of it, so we switch to beans, we don't have any corn going in when we should only have beans. Just getting her cleaned up, ready to go. We got the combine cleaned out. Thought we'd come over here and start running some beans. Ran just a little bit last night, just enough to kind of get an idea what the beans were, and they were, oh, too damp. Plugged the combine up, it's kind of bad. Had to dig it out, that's a major pain in the butt. Had to take these covers off, look down inside the concave, drop it out of the way so we could dig it out. Not a good deal. Anyway, so I started up a minute ago and noticed I had a slight bit of oil dripping from here. So I said, what the heck? Looked up in here. And this little line coming down over here. She's just coming right up, right up out of there. Kind of like that big one was the other day. So, no, we're not going to run with it leaking. We're going to take that off. Go into the... Go into the dealer probably and just have them make us a hose quick because it's leaking a while and it's only going to get worse. So, yeah, we'll get that off around the town and come back and the grass is awful crunchy. Here's a little bit that I left. You can hear it. It's awful crunchy and crispy, so it should run. So, we'll check it out. Doesn't seem to be leaking. Got the new line put on. It's not leaking there. You don't see anything leaking there. The old one was leaking out right out the top of it. Right out of that stupid crimp. Doesn't seem to be leaking, so we're back in business. Guess we'll go try to run some beans. Well, it's running through well. Got grass. Quite as ominous as it looks. Running through well. Looks like the moisture is. Can you barely read it? 11.9. We took a hand sample in yesterday after we plugged. And just to see what our moisture sensor was going to say, see how close it was. Our hand tester said it was 16.1 or similar, close to. The elevator said it was 16.2 or just a little under. So we know our our sensor checker here, moisture checker, is pretty darn accurate. So with this saying 11.9, we're going to go ahead and run it a little bit. And uh, as part of the clean out, we'll just dump this in the in the wagon and need you to run it in the elevator and we'll be completely cleaned out. And we can start dumping it in the bin as soon as we get back. Get a couple hoppers stuck in that little gravity wagon. We'll run it over and fill the bin. Get it put in the bin. This farm won't fill the bin, but you know what I mean. So, well, we're going to do as much as we can tonight. Start back in on it tomorrow. It's supposed to be sunny all week, I guess. So, it's game time. Get you off. Stuff from more in there that we're dumping out and taking right into the elevator to get rid of. That way we don't get any any corn mixed in with our food grade soybeans. 
DJ's around back moving the pickup out of the way. Well, you probably can't see it very well in the mirror. I didn't get that mirror washed the other day. I did get the windows washed with the new squeegee and got our mirror washed right over here. Well, I tell you, that squeegee, I bought it from Menards, seven bucks, extendable handle on it, so it's basically like the ones you find at the truck stops. Really nice. And that's a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a whole bunch of, of uh, window cleaner and shop rags. So I really like that. Best seven bucks I spent cleaning the windows, I think, ever. So, so DJ's going to run that little sample into town. And now the combine's cleaned out, we can finish putting the rest of this. Is there 50? Here's 50 or 55 acres. I can't remember the total number. They're all broke up into a bunch of little, bunch of little pieces. So we'll get this field, this farm underway. I'll just try to get this thing filled up before he gets back. Well, as I'm dumping this first load, I just want to say something. A lot of guys don't really think about when they think about organic crops. Uh, my soybean fields this year are certainly more grassy than I would like them to be. But after running that corn that we ran last week, I kept pretty close, pretty close eye on the amount of wildlife that we saw in the field as we were harvesting. We did see quite a lot of deer damage, but we didn't see any deer. There was an awful lot of ears and kernels that would be on the ground, whether I had knocked them on the ground or they were on the ground previously to me going through the stand. So corn that the deer or coons have knocked off. Now, the coons and stuff would definitely be eating that corn, but so also would rabbits and birds, pheasants and quail of light. I didn't see but one or two rabbits in that whole 60 acre piece. Now as we have finished my first field today that is about five acres, five and a half maybe, I have chased or, or flushed out probably a half dozen rabbits. And for the first time on this property, I chased out a rooster pheasant. Now that might not seem like much to some of you other farmers, but pheasants in Southern Iowa is kind of a novelty. There hasn't been any really in the area for quite a few years. I think we've got some in this area, my area currently right now because some of the hunting places have turned a few loose and they're just naturally they're they're you know getting off into the wild and kind of being part of the wild habitat but that the closest hunting area to me is probably about seven miles back to the east so I don't know where that, that rooster would have came from that's on this farm like I said that is the first time I have ever seen rooster pheasants on this place so anyway, my point in the organic part of this is this being a lot more uh, covered with the, the grass and some of the weeds. The, the weeds don't really provide much cover, but man, if you look at these soybeans, that's quite a lot of cover. You know, the rabbits, pheasants, quail, and the like, they all, they all need cover to stay protected from uh, coyotes and and hawks will, you know, they, hawks will come right out of the sky and pick a rabbit or pheasant up. And the turkeys, my goodness, they will go through and just completely devastate a, a pheasant nest. I don't know what it is, why turkeys are so uh, aggressive towards other birds or nests or, or, or whatever, but they just do. They, we've had some turkeys, uh, domesticated turkeys that we've raised, and we thought, you know, heck, we'd put some quail and pheasant in with them just because we have a flight van. Uh, we might as well utilize it for all the flighty birds and those pheasants and quail don't stand a chance against the turkey. You know, I mean, even the light ones, the turkey will come along and just 
they just sit there and they peck at the bird and they chase it around the den until, you know, basically they will have killed it. So, granted in the wild, you know, the, the littler birds can fly away, but the eggs can't. They, they certainly can't fly away. So, just a, a little food for thought, guys. I think organic is definitely better for the environment than conventional farming with uh, chemical and such and burning everything down to where there's only the crop that you want there to live. The animals certainly need somewhere to hide and you know granted they're gonna eat my organic crop probably just as much as they would your conventional stuff but now there's gonna be more animals there and better better uh, system better ecosystem you got more uh, variety of wildlife so I don't know. Tell me what you guys think. Is, uh, or, or is organic really making that big a difference on the wildlife showing up down here? Let me know. Comment. Well, it's dark. The sun's been down for about 10 minutes. And it's starting to get tough again. So we're going to have to quit here in just a minute. Don't know if I'll be able to make it back over to the other end over here. We're about the fourth pass. This is the fifth pass from the outside, so we're making a little dent in the field. Not very much. This ain't a very big field. I think it's only about 15 acres. But yeah, if you can hear that. I'll come back and get the rumbly tumbly again. So, we're going to finish this one. And then that'll be it for tonight. And the hopper. It's getting almost full. It's getting right up there. So, we'll be back and see if we can. See if we can run again tomorrow. Hopefully the sun will be out. Burn off whatever dew we get in the morning and we can keep running. So, catch you next time.